because of the way our culture is. And I think there needs to be some more gratitude towards like the merits and like the fact that the lights are on, the fact that the water just spews t- fucking however much clean water you want, just all the time out of the tap, you just psh, turn the tap on, clean water, psh, just never stops. How do they like, survive in the they... Walking Dead? With their <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's insanity what we're living in. You know, these four walls, like the heat, the fucking. In- I can just go take a warm shit. I just walked into. I'm not. I don't even have to leave the house. It's just right. In the- it's attached to the house. There's two of them in this house. There's two places I can shit inside this house. It's a, I mean, it's, you could really shit anywhere you want. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I can shit anywhere. Yeah. You can shit in the house. Realistically, but, I can but, shit anywhere else. But, but we have places where it takes the shit out. Yeah, and you don't have it's to like smell it totally too socially covered. Like it's a clean shit. There's no repercussions. It's just like whatever I eat is it's no repercussions. repercussions. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I, there must be me some. Re- where's all this shit going? I that's the word the problem be because then when you get all the sewage out in the water it's, it's super it's great for these certain types of microbes and our diets microbes. are so fucked that the shit we're shitting can't be good and, and so tons of uh, pharmaceuticals end up in the water oh man all right, it's, so but let's no let's, let's focus on the gratitude though. there's different. some things you gotta be gra- great well I mean this is a good interesting, it's a good point to you because like I, this is in this is in defense of like radical protesting activist people is that there is obviously tons of things we can and should be doing better. It's like an unending list of things we could be doing better. But I think like our culture so far has been doing a damn good job of like identifying what the next hurdle to jump over is and jumping over it and leaving it in the past more or less and continuing forward. Mind you though, like the history I'm referring to is just the past like couple hundred years, like the indus- industrial revolution. Really, like how, how we are now as a result of that. It's like, in terms of like the history of the Earth, the history of the universe, it's just like nothing. And so things are actually changing so fast, it makes your head spin. It's, called, like, it's such a slow-moving thing, it's a miracle that there's so much radical change happening right now. It's just like we're in a crazy period of history, and uh, it's unprecedented, it's, and we don't know what's going to result. Yeah. It's just like, who knows? But uh, So I, I think you know we need to just like you know come back a little bit from the far edges of the left, get a little more centered, have a more open dialogue with just, you know, individuals, regardless of political ideology, regardless of where you stand on issues and things, just like uh, candidly and objectively uh, and honestly discuss issues for the sake of coming to some sort of consensus about things so that we can effectively identify the areas we need to improve, improve them, and then identify the next thing we need to improve and improve that. And then the whole while through, we don't actually know for sure if we're actually improving things or making them worse. Like oil, you know, that turned out to be a pretty big fuck up. So, like, you know, we have to also just be correcting the mistakes of the past too on top of just, like, addressing what might have been an issue from the beginning. I mean, it's a miracle anything gets solved at all. Yeah, that's the thing that I, I think about a lot is just, like, I'm always, you know, I wake up and I look at the news and I see all this craziness in the world. I'm like, how does any of this even work? So much, so much shit happens I have no in this fucking idea. And, it's, and, and I have to remind myself, you know, we could be some of the luckiest people in the world because who knows what our grandchildren or children or grandchildren have to deal with. You know, this, we, I think it's easy to take for granted how good we have it. And I think it goes back to, you know, we should be, in some ways... You know, more grateful for what we have and I can certainly see situations why some people aren't grateful because they experience some problems uh, with with society like such as racism and I, I saw an interesting article actually I didn't actually read it I just read the headline in the blur <laughs> but what it's I liked the I liked it I know a lot of people disagree with this but I actually thought it was good to think about someone talked about microaggressions and I know that's a very hot button issue people hate the idea of microaggressions and I can understand why but there is something we said for this one person was pointed out it's like it's like death by a thousand cuts. And when you live in a culture, it's not the end of the world that you have people making these ridiculous, you know, saying something stupid about race or something that's not necessarily malicious. But it is can be a death by a thousand cuts. So there are things like it's, I don't think we should just ignore it and just say you're being a whiny little bitch because you can't handle that, you know, that people being slightly offensive. But I, I'll tell you what I think what, come, what it comes down to is like, I think what happens. You know, there's these people who have these grievances. Maybe they're not life and death threatening, but you have this culture now where people are becoming so polarized that it's really, it's like you were saying, you, 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 need, you need to have these conversations with people where people actually identify issues, right? And if you come to the table with something like, um, 
like oh I don't like it when, when people just assume because I'm a person of color that I'm not from this country or something like that and you've got this person across the table who's like why does that matter I'm trying to you know get an economy going here well, I want to be able to make sure that my kids can have a job and that's what you're concerned about you know this person doesn't have the, the experience where that might offend them and you get these two people who are start to assume sort of a, a, a bit of malice in their intentions so on the left it's always assumed that they secretly are harboring these Nazi fascist tendencies. And like, I don't want to de- talk to that person about anything because ultimately what they want to do is, you know, they don't care about the, the fact that I don't like being people saying things about me as a person of color and they probably don't care because they're secretly Nazi. And then the people on the right are like, oh, they're probably those goddamn neo Nazis. Nar- uh, Marxists. They're, in, they're infiltrating all the universities. Mm. And there's assumed malice. So these discussions just break down. Like, uh, yeah, like, the opportunity for discussion just goes out the window. So when I'm thinking of what there's something, what was it recently I was, I was reading? There was something, oh, abortion. Abortion's a hot topic issue. It always has been. What I've noticed is that, like, from the, from the left, for example, there's this narrative that it's solely about men controlling women's bodies. And, then I was, and so it, to me, in my mind, when I think of anti-abortion, I assume it's mostly men. But then you have my mom and my entire Catholic church that I went to when I was a kid. Almost all the, I'm pretty sure all the women in that church are so anti-abortion. And it has nothing to do with men. They sincerely believe it's wrong. But the, if you talk to someone on the left, it's all framed from the narrative that it's men trying to control women's bodies. And there's no doubt about it. There is that huge amount of men who come from this sort of religious background that shuns sex and outside of marriage. And, you know, the, some men see women who get a lot of abortions as being, you know, there's an immorality to it. But there's people like my mom who and tons of men too who they sincerely believe that it's uh, it's just you're, it's murder that's how my mom yeah. views it she's disappointed in the fact that I don't agree with her and like it has nothing to do with, it, with her being controlled by men to think that way that's something she came to the conclusion based off of her values and the left will demonize people as, uh, as being anti-abortion and assume some sort of malice when it really could be that there's actually they believe what they believe because of their values and then of course there's the right the right have similar views about the left and seeing malice at every corner. And that's something that I think just leads to a, a breakdown that we're seeing in, in political discourse. And, you know, it's hard for me sometimes to recognize that on the left. Uh, another one would be uh, um, this, there's a debate that I was following online quite a bit on this. There was a there was a woman shelter or was it, a, it was either a shelter or a library of some sort for feminism like feminism books, I think, maybe, or art. I can't tell you all the details of that. The point was, it was a women's group in Vancouver, I think. And I guess they they ran afoul of some leftist um, folks who said that they were anti-transgenderism or anti-transgender uh, people. And this led to like the, a group of people storming this building and like basically like ripping a poster down and basically like hollering at everybody, calling them anti I don't really know exactly. I, 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 but I just the point was they assume that because these they because of some things that they're some books that they carried in this woman's library that they were anti transgender and stuff like that. They assume malice. You know what I mean? That, yeah, that's it's, they go into it. Well, I have a story that's kind of uh, it, it, it illustrates this. It illustrates the phenomenon, but completely out of the context of any of this. That's okay. It's just like, but it's just, I feel like it, it I think it's a good story because it, the, I think the phenomenon, like the capacity for us to just like enter into, well, I'll just tell the story and, and make the point. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll see. So we're roofing the conservatory, the, the Halifax Music Conservatory, um, and uh, we were working this one particular Sunday, and we were doing the front where there's the only, like, ramp wheelchair access. And there's, like, there's church services uh, here, and there's, you know, tons of music lessons going on every day of the week. Um, so we're roofing the front part, and uh, there's two different church services at the building. So there's, like, periods of time when we couldn't work because we don't want... We, we typically, when we're working, have that area... And all the parking spaces in the area, sectioned off, taped off, saw horses, construction signs, everything. Because, like, we're working up above on the roof. Mm. Like, you drop a nail gun, you drop a hatchet, you drop any, like, you know, that's just going to take some old person right in the head and split their head yeah. in two pieces. Like, you know, you don't want that. <laughs> so, it's, uh, but you know, it's amazing what, you know, just on a quick tangent. Like, you put up caution tape and saw horses and construction signs everywhere, and people just 
absolutely disregard them 100%. <laughs> the amount of times I had to yell at the guy like, Hey! Get out of here! <laughs> it's insanity. Like, people, if you know. see caution tape and saw horses and, and, and you know, this, this brings into question whether or not they even see these things. You know, they're just walking. They don't even care. They're just like, they got to get to where they're going and they're just walking over anything in their path. But if you see those things, like, or if danger men working above, like, there might be a risk that you're going to take some deadly, heavy, sharp tool in the face, like, just walking through that area. So, like, anyways. I, I blo- a blo- quick blo- PSA. Quick PSA, this. yeah. Stay at a construction site, especially if they're working at heights. Anyways, it's amazing how many... So, anyways, uh, we're working, and uh, we were told that there was this concert going on, and, but, and we couldn't work for, like, half an hour while people were entering the building, but we could work during the concert, and we were going to stop, take a break while people left. Turned out, so, 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 like, we're roofing and shingling and banging the nail guns against the roof, and then this guy, just, like, we just all hear this, like, you know, disembodied voice off in the distance, like, hey, what are you doing up there? And we look on the ground, and there's this guy in a full suit on the ground, and he's just waving his hands like crazy, and he's like... What are you doing? No, stop! Stop the work! This is not okay! This is not okay! Who told you guys you could be working? Like, you can't be working in here. He starts screaming, I got 200 people in here playing a concert. You guys are up there making all kinds of noise. I can't have it. And we're like, you got 200 people in there. Why don't you send some of them up here to help us roof this fucking room? <laughs> <laughs> we only got six people up here. You got 200. We didn't actually say that. Uh, we were <laughs> we were incredibly cordial with this man, and we were complied, and we were nice about it. We just like you know, sorry, man, for the miscommunication. Like, uh, you know, we talked, we told him who we talked to, who said it was okay, and everything. And we just, we yo, know, we all tried to engage in discussion with this guy and just be objective, be real be like you know like we're sorry if you if there's if there's a mistake and we can't work like we'll stop it's all good and so eventually what we did we went down and just like took a break until they were done and and uh so that was how that day went but this this man just went out into the situation hostile yeah. and looking for a fight you know like looking for hostility and what if we had been the kind of people who res- responded hostily to you're like, I'm up there with a fucking nail gun. Why don't I just shoot the guy? <laughs> like, or just like, I don't know. Like, it's like, obviously we wouldn't do that. And obviously any good, sensible, mature person would not do that. But like, you don't know what kind of fucking people you might just be dealing with in an interaction like that. It's risky to go and be that hostile with other human beings. Because other human beings might be fucking crazy or murderous. And who knows? And so like... Where it just, uh, I just couldn't believe, like, that guy's gall, just to, like, you know, um, he wasn't particularly big and physically threatening or anything, you know, like, a bunch of big roofers up there, like, you know, you go back a few hundred years and you just go into a situation like that, like, the wrong kind of person would just kick the shit out of you, or worse, and I just couldn't believe, like, and so it's not that, like, you're nice to people out of fear that they're gonna kick your ass, but, like, you know, also just the general courtesy you do other individual beings, it's like, you know, you're alive, I'm alive, we're both just, like, getting through the day, trying to do what we have to do to get through life and to hopefully enjoy some of it, and, like, let's, you know, let's talk and let's negotiate and let's, like, just have a, have a conversation and a dialogue and discourse about things yeah. without this crazy, emotionally charged, just hostile environment. And so even though, and this was just another guy who was, like, you know, we're all white, we're all men, we're just, like, and it's just, like, all those other things aside that could, people tend to, like, polarize these days, it's, like, you know, this per- this other individual human just came at us in such a hostile way, you know, and we were, we, we, we de-escalated the situation, we were calm, and we just talked, and we, everything was okay, but, like, I just, like, you can't just go into an interaction, like, you are talking about, so I'm, I'm bringing it all back to what you mentioned about, like, the assumed hostility or whatever, yeah. just going into the conversation, it's like, how do you expect that you're gonna have a, like, what did he, what did he think, how did he think that was gonna go? I mean, it went well. But, like, only because we were good and civil, you know, it's like, how do you think an interaction is going to go when you enter into it with that much aggression? You're ex- you're just, like, sowing the seeds of aggression back at you. And it's like, uh, this is one of the things that just was such a huge lesson le- working at the call center, is having empathy for these people working these customer service lines 
Like, they're just taking the most insane verbal abuse all day. Yeah. Just having the worst, like, no windows, no fluorescent lights, or just, I mean, only fluorescent lights. And, and it's like, you know, I, I, had, I never have any issues getting whatever I want from customer service lines.